What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Bronx Pinstripe Show. If you recall, last Friday's episode, Scott had to leave early. He just jetted out of here. <laughs> I know where this is going. What happened, Scott? Where'd you go? Oh, well, I had a dentist appointment that I had to go to, right? And uh, it was a 10 o'clock appointment. And uh, yeah, so I go haul ass over there. Turns out it's this week. So I got to do it again. <laughs> Uh, so Scott might sends, leave early again. Who who sends a text message two weeks ahead of a, a an appointment? Two, that's the thing. You can't confirm. You can't remind me two weeks ahead. It doesn't count. You, you can't confirm for Friday when there's a Friday that's going to happen before my actual Friday, and it's Absolutely. not the correct Friday. You yeah. can do it as early as Saturday, the the before the Friday. But you, I can't have two Fridays before my appointment. The amount of text it. messages that I get too, it's not like I can't read that entire thing. I see reminder, dentist Friday. <laughs> Confirm I'm going. one. Okay, go. Got, good. That's it on my calendar. All right, I gotta put it on. <laughs> you know, it's like there's only so many things you can read in this in this world. This is like I gotta gripe. <laughs> you can't even read a text message. You, you can't got, read a probably seven word text message. Hold on, I got one more. We we had to print out like family photos uh, for a project that Kemp was doing at school. So Bevan sent them to like Walmart where they sent them out, right? We go to one Walmart. There's two Walmarts in the area. We go to one Walmart. We never go to the second Walmart. <laughs> Bevan, Bevan, and they are very far away from each other once you go once you commit to one. Uh, and and so I'm I'm there. I'm at the Walmart waiting to get the, the things. They they look up. Nothing. I go back to the text. It says, see, they're ready. And then I see at the bottom of the, the screenshot that she, she sent me. And it's the other Walmart that we never go to. And she's like, it's right there. I'm like, what are you talking about? You know where I was going. <laughs> I have a similar situation with CVS where when we moved out of the city, we lived with Leanne's parents in Wyckoff for yeah. a period of time. So temporarily, we had prescriptions go to the, the Wyckoff CVS. And it took Leanne close to two years of living in Ramsey to finally change it to the CVS Ramsey. So yeah. I'm just driving to Wyckoff for freaking <laughs> prescriptions like every other week. And there were all the time because it was when Harrison was born and he had ear infections every freaking day. So I, we were getting antibiotics for Harrison. I was driving to Wyckoff just for CVS every other week. Man, a little bit of a haul. Those back roads will take you, uh, take you some time. About but guess what? Drive. Guess what? <laughs> The Yankees are American League East champions. There we go. Bury in the lead. <laughs> Bury in the lead, yeah. With personal drama. That that's the that's the takeaway from the week. <laughs> um we went into this week being like, yeah, the Baltimore series is kind of a dud now. The 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 division's locked up. We're not gonna not gonna have much to talk about. And there's a lot to talk about from this series. Yes, the Yankees did secure the AL East with their win. Thursday, but I was worried for a second, like, oh God, they get swept by Baltimore. Like they're still going to probably win the division because you just got to take one game from Pittsburgh and you win it. But the fact that you have to go would have had to go into the weekend playing for something would have felt kind of bad. So I'm glad that is not the case. And also, if the Yankees end up facing Baltimore in the ALDS, which is a very real possibility, at least you didn't get swept the week before by Baltimore who has been reeling all second half. And I mean, I guess Baltimore can still take positives from the series because they did take two out of three, but getting swept here would have felt really bad. Yeah, no doubt. And you go into that third game after losing the first two against Corbin Burns. And you're like, well, I know we got Garrett Cole on the bump, but it's kind of a toss up at this point. You know what, what this game's going to be. It could go into the sixth inning with, you know, no run scored. If, if both guys are on their, on their shit, then it's on, then it's on the bullpens, you know, you go seven, eight, nine or eight, nine, whatever, um, with two, two very unpredictable bullpens at the top of a division, which are most likely going to be the reason why one of these teams is outed. I, I would, I would venture to guess that the bullpen will be a reason why, uh, either the Yankees or the Orioles do not get uh, advance in the playoffs at some point. Um, so yeah, you never know uh, going into that, but, uh, but it worked out and they were able to take it and, and, uh, and, and hit burns a little bit. And then, and then, you know, again, hit the bullpen. So what they're obviously division champs, they are one up on Cleveland going into the weekend. And obviously you still want to secure that. So I guess in theory, you need to win at least two games to, yeah. To get, although you could tie with Cleveland and get it because the Yankees have the tiebreaker. But if Cleveland sweeps, then you need to win two games 
to tie them to then get the tiebreaker there. It matters, although I don't know how much it matters because... <laughs> well, they're playing Houston. Houston's got 86 <laughs> wins. Well, here's so the he- thing. Houston yeah. doesn't really... They're not really playing for anything at this point. Do you expect to see Cleveland in the ALCS? <laughs> I don't. <clears throat> well, the it's funny that they're playing Houston... Um, because they're going to play, they're most likely going to play Houston in their division series. Yeah. So they, um, you know, I'm wondering how much, how much each other shows, uh, shows their hand in this series. This will be, especially because Cleveland, this is one of those series where you're looking at it and you're talking to the manager and you're like, okay, really, what are you going for? Are you, are you, we want health or are you really trying to get the best record in the American league so that you can get home field advantage? Like how important is that to you as, as Cleveland? (laughs) I, I don't know. I don't, I don't. Probably, probably not as not as much as setting yourself up for success against Houston because that's what's going to be right in front of you um, in in, uh, in the series anyway. So, yeah, I guess the only thing for both Cleveland and the Yankees this weekend you can you can say we're going for home field advantage, knowing that you have a week off. So it's like you don't have to worry about overusing your bullpen this weekend because everyone has a week off anyway. Yeah, no, and that's true. No, but it's more about I'm not even saying like using your bullpen up. I'm saying about like showing your hand to Houston as showing your hand like, is it's game hey, 162. How much? Like there's game one. It matters. Six, uh, it matters. It matters. It matters. You don't want to see you don't want to see uh have them just see the guy that you're about to play well, in the DS. Like that's it does true. matter. Recent at bats. Recent you know, at bats, a, I think a, for there's guys. There's a comfort level. It, it's so recent that it's within a week. So it's not like you haven't it's not like there's there's a month or, or or you know x amount of games. It's like it's a very short amount of time. So it's a quick yeah, turnaround. I think that matters for starting pitching. Yeah, it, because starters when you like Cole's going to face could face Baltimore back to back starts because he just faced Baltimore and then his first start of the division series could be against Baltimore. Now, does that benefit Cole? Does that benefit the Orioles hitters? Usually, it benefits hitters when you see a guy like you see this all the time in the regular season. When for some stupid reason, this, this the baseball schedule just feels like you play a team at home, and then seven days later you play that same team on the road, and then the starting pitchers line up the exact same way, and then so the usually not usually oftentimes in that second start, the starting pitcher won't pitch as well because hitters like I just I just saw thirty pitches from this guy last week. I don't think it's as relevant in division just because they there is more familiarity in division. However, Cleveland, Houston, you know, they don't see each other all, all all that all that much. So, I think there's there's a level there. I don't think it's a huge thing, but I think it's it's a it's something. So, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if if so, if one of the if the Cleveland uh, or Houston uh starting pitchers are getting to the, you know, into the 5th inning and 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 they pull them uh just to just to show some different stuff. I just wouldn't be surprised that way. And Houston doesn't really have much to play for. So do you think the Yankees are trying, like, do you think they think home field advantage is important? Um, yeah, I think they, I think they do think that. I think they do think that. I think they think, even though they have the best road record in the league this year, I think they want it. You know, whether you, if you ask Boone this question and, and he may have been asked, or he's probably going to be asked now. Um, he will say that, of course, we want it, but we're you know, and we're prioritizing health and making sure our guys are in a good spot. Like that's at the end of the day, like if they get it, they get it. I have a feeling it'll be that they're not going to do extra things to get it. Yeah, I see. I see what you're saying. They're not going to like. They're in the driver's they, seat though. They're in the driver's seat though. That's the thing. They are in the driver's seat, but they're not going to pull out stops to go and get it. They're not going to bring out someone or stretch someone or. They're not going to make anything uncomfortable. No situation will be in a, in a in a place where they have to do something, and then he does this move just to get home field advantage. Unless it's coming down to like the last outs. Well, what I then, don't, I don't think it would be a, a decision or a deciding factor within a decision. What I don't want to see is guys like getting like. I, ju- there's no reason Judge shouldn't play every day this weekend like he's gonna have a week off and he also has an outside shot to break the break his previous home run record because he, he had a couple home runs this week so if he has a good weekend he could hit 63 home runs he ain't breaking that record the i mean unless he unless he goes bonkers What's I mean, he have, he isn't a, he at 58 57 or he's oh. about 58 the, okay he, so, yeah, uh, sorry sorry so he would have to hit he, he has a runs. he has a chance to hit to uh get 60 which 60. i think okay would, i would love to see i love that's to see a nice 60. that's a nice number yeah. Um and they got Paul Skeens in the second in the second uh in the second game Skeens versus Heel, which is a 
really good, um, really good matchup. But uh, yeah. But like, you know, what I'm saying is, deep. Soto should get all of his at bats. Judge should get all. Of, you should. I get think they your will get their at-bats. all your at bats. Yes, definitely. Especially yeah. because they have so much time off. Right. That, that's the thing. You have you have the week off that you have to sort of factor in here. All right. Before we get to some positives from the Baltimore series, our old friends at Manscaped are back with another great offer, introducing the Beard and Balls Bundle. And that's a nice little uh, nice little alliteration there featuring the lawnmower 5.0 and the beard hedger with this ultimate package. You are covered from 12 to six, a trimmer for the money maker and another for the boys down under. Gotta love it. Raise your hand if you've ever used the same trimmer on your face and in your your below the waist region. It's okay. It's okay to admit it is what it is, but you do not have to do that anymore because Manscaped has you covered with two awesome gadgets to keep your beard trimmed and your groin neat. The lawnmower 5.0 ultra is a next is their next in a long line of great trimmers. Manscaped has developed. It is waterproof helps prevent nicks because it is gentle on the skin and reduces the risk of ingrown hairs, all essential things for a trimmer. And next up in this package, you have the beard hedger. Whether you're going for a neat stubble, kind of kind of like Scott has been go- rocking these uh these last few weeks, or a bit of a thicker beard, this trimmer has you covered, and this one is waterproof too, meaning you can trim your beard in the shower, which makes for an easy cleanup because you know you get the hairs in the sink and everything. It's just it's just a mess. It's nice to just get it down the drain. Manscaped has thought of everything when it comes to men's grooming. It's a great product that I use still to this day. I use the trimmer that I I bought from Manscaped when they advertised last on the show. I know our our listeners will appreciate it too. Get 20% off plus free shipping with code Bronx20 at manscaped.com. That is 20% off and free shipping with code Bronx20 at manscaped.com. No more juggling multiple tools or dealing with super uh, subpar results, just efficient, effective grooming wherever you need it. Manscaped.com, code Bronx20. We're also brought to you today by Factor Meals. Eating healthy and nutritious meals can be a difficult task, especially when there's many things to juggle, like Do I confirm this dentist appointment? What day is this dentist appointment? I can't even think. I just need to heat up a meal quickly because my brain is not functioning because I don't have the proper nutrients. Scott, looking at you. That's where Factor comes in to save the day. With Factor, you get no prep, no mess meals delivered right to you. You can also stick to your wellness goals because because their meals are nutritious and dietitian approved. The Factor process is very easy. You go to their website, choose from over 35 delicious meals each week. You can customize your deliveries with 60 different add-ons. Highly skilled chefs prepare the food and it gets delivered to you. Heating meals up takes just two minutes and then my favorite part there's no mess or anything to clean up you just take the package pop it in the trash all the factor meals are fresh and never frozen with options from breakfast all the way to dessert and everything in between with fall rolling around i highly recommend the chorizo chili it has got a really nice flavor and it's a perfect amount of kick that any chili needs we have a great offer for you right now head to factormeals.com slash bronx 50 and use code bronx 50 to get 50 percent off your first box plus 20 percent off your next month Awesome deal. 50% off your first box, 20% off your next month. Factormeals.com slash Bronx 50. I still got my, uh, this stubble is coming from a Manscaped razor. Okay. There you go. Still doing it. You alternate between the beard and and clean shaven much more frequently than than I do. No, it's just, it's just whether I shaved it that day or not, to be honest. All right. It's too gray. It's too gray now. It's too gray. The beard. Yeah, it's too gray. It makes me look like 10 years older, so I don't do it. At least you've got hair on your head still. I do. I'm, you know, knock on wood. I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate. No, you, I don't know you, what's happening in the back, though. It's, it's hard to see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number one positive, Stan. He's, he can smell the crisp October air. I love which, it. Which is why his bat is heating up. Thursday in the clinching game for the Yankees, two for four, home run, four RBIs. And his last seven games, he's hitting 269 with a 367 on base, 577 slugging. That's good for a 944 OPS with two homers, eight runs batted in. Said this last episode, he's been a playoff performer every single year for the Yankees. I think he's an important cog in the lineup because his righty bat keeps the balance of lefty, righty, lefty, or righty, lefty, righty, lefty. And I do legitimately think he has good at bats with runners on base, runners in scoring position. He's had good playoff playoffs for the Yankees. I just think he's a, he's a big game performer. It, that's his track record. So he's heating up at the right time. Yeah. And especially if the Yankees are going to see left-handed pitching at all in the playoffs, which if you have a left-handed pitcher against the New York Yankees and you're in the playoffs, you're going to throw that guy uh, because the Yankees have struggled mightily all season long up until JP Sears walks in the, uh, you know, we walk into his building for the last time 
Um, it's going to be important. Those right-handed bats hitting left-handed pitching. Uh, and he, I mean, he came up with the, with, with, with runners on and doesn't waste any time. He sees a ball in the zone and he's, and he, and he smokes it. So, um, it's, it's good timing for him. Understandable that there's a week off. So hopefully he could stay in a good spot, but I think that, uh, you know, the timing is, is, is great. So he's, uh, and he has that other, that next element of power after the, after the big boys, because Austin Wells has been struggling, you know, over the past few weeks here and Stanton is going to be more important. And especially against the lefty bat, like you very well, will see Stanton, um, in that four spot potentially just to, just to give that extra, that extra thump against the left-hander. Yeah, but I think last night was their playoff. I mean, we're going to talk about the left field situation coming up, but take that position out. Torres at second, Soto and right, Judge in center, Wells catcher, Stanton DH, Chisholm at third base, Dominguez was in left field, then Rizzo and Volpe. That's their playoff lineup. Yeah. You know what they said last night? They, they asked them, um, or yeah, I think it was yesterday or the day before, so they were asking Boone about, uh, they were talking about it last night in the broadcast. That's what it was. Uh, they asked Boone about the struggles potentially. I, I know we'll talk about those struggles, but but shifting guys around in the outfield. Because if you think about it, the natural positions and where they have been, and, and we've talked about this in the past and where Soto can be. Soto in left, Judge in right. Judge in right's a much better option just because he's a he's a gold glove right fielder. And then you have uh, Dominguez in center field. Like to, That makes sense. It makes a lot of sense when you're thinking about it. But when when Boone when asked about this exact question, an exact opportunity and potential, Boone's like, "Haven't talked about it, haven't discussed it, haven't discussed. You haven't contemplated this." <laughs> he you says that even all the time. Thought though. about this? He says that all the time when asked about in-game decisions too. I remember there was something, a situation earlier in the year talking about potentially walking a batter, and he's like, "No, it did didn't even come up." You got a guy that's that's having a, a, a difficult time going to his right, our left, and you didn't even think about it. You haven't thought about it when, when the guys actually slot back into their natural positions. It, but that's, is, that's what it on. is. To, what is Soto's natural position? Look, I don't think Soto's a very good outfielder in the first place. He doesn't place. have a natural position, though. And, and if, especially at Yankee Stadium, I'd rather have him in right field than left field. I don't think it matters. I think it I'd does rather, matter. I'd rather – I'd rather – why? We, we're seeing what's happening in left field. Does it matter? No. Really? We're, okay. Should because, we just talk because, about this now? Because Jason Dominguez sh- is not going to get playoff – innings in left field how can you put a guy in left field in a playoff game that can't catch routine fly balls i think that you have to roll the dice with dominguez you have to it's damned if you do damned if you don't i was saying this in our in our text chat let's, last night let's hold off let's hold off on this topic and fi- finish uh, on the thought because there's more because this martino article uh i want to sit in that one for a minute too so there's there's a lot more meat to this bone okay he's, fine you want to just become fire a, through the other a, positive he's become a goddamn suit <laughs> let's fire through get him back on the show and have you can because i don't think you've ever had we've ever done a podcast with both of them you should you should hash it out with them all right so we talked about state number two positive garrett cole was great last night two hits over six and two thirds innings no runs five strikeouts one walk he's going to face baltimore potentially in his next outing so it's great to see him dominate that lineup number three positive sterling's back he is I, back i legitimately listened to two full games this week <laughs> just because sterling was back it's like he never left Susan just has an extra oh, pep in so her much step, more comfortable. so much more happy. He, she says, we, <laughs> she was talking about when, when Colton Beater came back in the game, she's like, I don't know if you remember Colton Beater, but we remember him because he was playing in the first series at Houston. Remember John? Cause they were together. You know, it's it was like, like the band is back together. They just have an extra, a little something there. It's like her, her soulmate left for, yeah six months for for some unforeseen reason and he's back and they're they're together again and they're better than ever sterling i mean he sounded like the day he left like like nothing had changed yeah. he made some mistakes that's okay i that's still love does. him that's yeah. what he does he's just getting he's just getting some reps in before the playoffs you know a photo for soto he pulled he pulled <laughs> the brett Favre and retired and unretired but that's okay he's john oh, sterling man, he can do uh, that I thought you were going to go somewhere else with that. Never mind. So yeah, no, he didn't pull a breath fire. He didn't. He didn't uh, send any unwanted no, no, pictures. No, 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 not or, even that. Not or, even that. Didn't he like defraud some charities or something? No, Brett Favre has Parkinson's now, so he, <laughs> he does. Yeah, he just announced that like two days ago. I did not see that. Yeah, uh, my Brett Favre reference wasn't great then, huh? There's a lot of different Brett Favre references. You can go different <laughs> places with that one. Well, he pulled a. Uh, uh, he he pulled. Uh, who's another guy that? Re- oh, he pulled an Andy Pettit. Yeah. Well, Brett Favre did it a lot. <laughs> definitely did it a lot 
But I'm so happy Sterling's back. I'm happy he's back for the playoffs too, because that's going to feel like October baseball. I, I know I've said this before, but there's no reason he shouldn't just do home games next year. And it doesn't have to be every home game. Just like pick some home stands and do those just so we get a little bit of Sterling in our life throughout the season. I don't think you could do that. You could do that. It's like, it's like, think about trying to do this show uh, once every, you know, month or so. Like if you're not paying attention and he and is doing... paying attention though. But when is he, he is he yes, not like he is. not okay. like he's when not he, like he's doing it uh, with the show not to okay, the level of uh, detail obviously but when he left he said one of the reasons I'm not just doing certain games is because I don't know if I'm going to be paying attention as closely but then when he was back for that ceremony the Yankees gave him over the summer and he was in the yes booth Michael K asked him and Stern's like I watch every game I'm 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 dialed in on everything so I think he learned that he is still following everything. Is it as close as if he was broadcasting? Of course not. But if you're follow, if you're watching the team every day, you could broadcast every other homestand, no problem. If you're watching the, the the team every day, yes, you can. But just wait until he gets an off season where he realizes, like, okay, hats off. You know, uh, the suit and the all, all, everything is 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 no longer being pressed. Like mentally checking out of doing the job at this point. I don't think he's mentally checked. So then, out why of it. is he doing the playoffs? Because I don't think he's mentally checked out of it this year. I think he I think he had some some lingering regrets of of how it ended, and I think he wants to 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 finish it off in the right way. And I don't blame him. I mean, I think he got you know the travel was was too much and. Rightfully so. You know, he's a, he's a, how old is he? 80, 80 plus? I think he's 89 years old. No, is he 89? I don't think he's 89. I'm looking it up. The, anyway, the, uh, that's a lot. And honestly, 80, even 86, 86, even going into the stadium on for home games, like getting up and doing the whole thing at that, at that age, it's a lot. It's a lot. So yeah, I don't blame an, he, him. He's 86 years old. Let the man retire. Just retire, man. Build, build him a room in the stadium. He just needs to. He just needs to go out on a on a on a more controlled note. I think rather than look, I'm just beat up and I can't do this anymore. No. <laughs> well, what happened is the season started. And he's like, oh god, there's god six damn, more months yeah. of this. <laughs> I thought I could do this, but yeah, no, for real. That's that's exactly what it went down. Uh, and he's at a point where he doesn't need to do that. So. um Look, I, I hope he gets everything he wants. And you know what? Frankly, the New York Yankees should be using John Sterling as a rally cry and play for John. They should play for John. That's what they should be playing for. Yeah. Win the World Stop Series for this. John Sterling. That's it. That's it. That should be that should be it should be like, you know, plastered in the in the clubhouse. Yeah, you know how Derek Jeter for the longest time used Bob Shepard for his yeah. walk up announcement. Yep. The Yankees for when they win, they should play the the Yankees win. Yeah, 100%. forever, and they should do it over the loudspeaker. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Good. They they've been doing that this year. I didn't even know that. I would rather them. Did I, I know that? Even yeah, you, we've def, we've talked about it. Okay, I forgot. They should, uh, and I thought it was my idea. <laughs> I would I would like them to in, incorporate John Sterling more. Like, let's get rid of the uh, the Death Star oh, siren because I'm, I'm really his, uh, starting to get sick of the Death Star siren. In case anybody didn't realize, the Death Star blew up twice. It lost every time. So maybe maybe we shouldn't use that. I don't know. Maybe that maybe that analogy went a little too far with uh, with being the evil empire. It was evil just to empire annoy empire the hitters. It's just to annoy the hitter because it's a very annoying sound. It's become it's become like a sound that I'm like, oh god, really? That's what we're doing? We should have John Sterling. It, it should be some kind of a John Sterling soundbite while we're uh, while we're doing. <laughs> we're getting, going for strike rally. three. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Just broadcast Sterling throughout the, the stadium going for strike three. Just calling things incorrectly. Just everyone's confused on the field. <laughs> yeah, it's confused the shit out of the pitchers. <laughs> All right, let's get to the negatives. I thought there was a lot of negatives from this series. So the first one I want to talk about is Glaber Torres' base running on that Soto single in the seventh inning on Tuesday. So Luis Rojas, third base coach, was giving Glaber the stop sign. He's rounding. Clearly, clearly. He's rounding the back. But so what happened? So at first I was like, oh, Glaber ran through the stop sign. What a moron. But then when you watch the replay, what happened is when Soto was going to second base, that's yeah. when Glaber was like, okay, I'm going to go home now. And then after the game, you heard Boone talk about it. And he said, he, Glaber was trying to protect Soto there, in which case I'm like, protect him. Okay. But he said he either needs to stay at third base or commit home. And instead Glaber kind of just went in between and so he was, 
very much picked off or picked picked in between the bag and it was a very easy rundown situation. Glaber need if he does if he is going to run, he just needs to sprint home in that situation. The fact of the matter is though, both of them need to stay at the base. Soto needs to stay at first base, Glaber needs to stay at third base and have Aaron Judge up with the tying run on third base. That's what needs to happen in that situation and both of them need to understand that and they didn't. Well, here's the problem with this, okay? First of all, Glaber, stupid. That was a dumb, dumb move. And and Boone's dumb for saying what he said after the game, too. This just goes back. I was I was texting with a listener of the show, uh, Bill, or DMing about the just the nonsense that this happens. This is this is on Boone. This is on Aaron Boone for again, not and the coaching staff for not instilling these fundamental values and and repeating them and drilling them into their heads and this becoming a thing. Like they should be walking around with a sign on their hands that say fundamentals, and then they should practice. They should look at their hands and say fundamentals. I don't care what it is. Tattoo it somewhere where they can see it. Put it everywhere. This team lacks the fundamentals, and especially on the base path, the amount of times that they've run into our Worst base running plate. team in the majors. Can, I read, you, can I read you hold, a... Hold on. Let me finish my thought. Rojas is completely holding up a stop sign. Dead. Like, he's not even, like, stressing about it. He's just like, you know, relax. There's Just chill out. We got... We got, uh, we got people coming up. Um, so your anticipation, Glaber, you're not a, you, you don't ha- have speed. You don't have a first step that allows you to make right. that instinct move to home. You don't have that. That is not there. You don't have that, 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 that twitch to get home on a play like that. You just don't. And second of all, let's all be honest. Aaron Judge is getting walked there no matter what, right? Not with first like, and third. Why? I, I would. I don't know. Even if, what's the difference between first and third and first and uh, second and third? No difference. I mean, you put the go ahead run on second base. That's the difference. But but at the end of the day, you're just, you're trying to take the at bat away from Judge, right? So okay, either well, way, Judge but, is not getting the at bat. But either but but it doesn't matter. It actually doesn't matter because he ran into an out. And if he's thinking in his head that Judge isn't going to get this at bat and he's trying to do something, he's not thinking that. Well. Then he needs to. Then he he needs to stop thinking that first of all, because it's too much thought going into the brain. There's no way he's thinking that far ahead. Maybe he just saw Judge, and there's like, oh, I don't even uh, think he knew. uh, He probably uh, didn't even know who was up next. I don't think he knows the batting order. It was a dumb. (laughs) He's like, I forgot that I was the leadoff hitter. (laughs) It's a. It's just it's an unexcusable, uh, inexcusable, not unexcusable, inexcusable base running mistake in a in a at a point where, and this is a big moment. Yes, this is, a, this is an opportunity you're, to tie the game to clinch back. the division. You're coming back in the seventh inning against a bad Baltimore bullpen. You get a hit to bring it to within one run. You've got Judge, and then even if you take the bat out of his hands, you've got Wells and then Stanton coming up. Yes. <laughs> you do not run into an out there. I want to read you something. So there was an article written by Ken Rosenthal, and he said, the noise in New York certainly will grow louder if the Yankees make a quick exit in the division series or even if they advance to the American League Championship Series and perform the way they did in 2022 when they were swept by the Houston Astros. The pressure is intensified by the Yankees' prolonged absence from the World Series, blah, blah, blah. It goes on to say that the uh, 2024 team um, – May be their best talent since 2009, but they can still be hard to watch. Quote, the Yankees are the worst base running team in the majors, according to fan graphs. Their lapses on the bases and in the field are at some level a reflection on their manager. This is something we've been saying. Not just at some level. Years. At, 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 at all yeah, levels. Sure, fine. But this is something we've been saying for years. And Rosenthal obviously is one of the most, if not the most prominent, member of the baseball media is writing this. So this is clearly a story in the media. Fans are very well aware aware of this. But are the Yankees, is the Yankees front office, is Yankees management, is Hal Steinberg, is Brian Cashman conscious of, are they conscious of it? Are they aware of it? Do they care? Because at this point, why would they say this, this is now, this is important to us after the past seven years. So I get what's, what, what uh on in a vacuum i get what rosenthal is saying but we haven't seen that for years we've seen this team be bad fundamentally make stupid mistakes on the bases make stupid mistakes in the field none of that has changed their decision on aaron boone so i don't know what's going to change this year if they make an early exit in the playoffs could they use that as an excuse to move on from aaron boone i suppose but i'm not buying it they're probably going to say well we rebounded this year we have the best record in the league. We we have home field advantage. We're in the division series. 
And if we get unlucky in the playoffs, we get unlucky. Three-year extension for Aaron Boone. That is what I'm fully expecting, whether they win the World Series or get swept in the, the Division Series. Well, I, it's, it's hard to say anything different because this has been uh, this has been us beating our head against a wall for the last three to four years. After you see a decent enough sample size to understand what Aaron Boone is and the fact that he just – He's the type of manager that doesn't sit on these types of details. And these are the types of details when you have a ta- whether you have a talented team or you have a, uh, you know, a, a team that's, that's playing beyond their means. It, it becomes more apparent when you have a talented team that runs into mistakes, that, that, that plays with their head up their ass because you realize the potential. And when you realize the potential of something, you're saying, okay, how could they be so silly as to not coach the fundamentals when you don't have to coach that much because of the talent? The talent is there. Where does the coaching come into play? Like, what are we doing on the coaching side? Clearly nothing, because all you're doing is saying, all right, guys, here's the lineup. Here's the the locker room, I guess. This is what we're doing. This is the here's the lineup. Make sure you're out there at your position sometimes. Like it's to make sure that it's to make sure that the flights are fun and they're all playing cards in the back and getting along. So yeah. Uh I mean Rosenthal this should be discussed at nauseum uh, outside the the stadium. It ha- but it, but it has been fans. I know, but it, fans but have been talking should, about it. it Media's be, been it talking should, about it. But but it should continue. It, it should absolutely continue. So I'm not. What what makes it different? I don't know. Maybe time. I don't know. Uh, the the fact that that they, you know there's an extension potentially coming up or not. I don't know. It's a it's a cleaner it's a cleaner. Uh, uh, amount they of don't time they don't the they don't like to fire managers. Can, they like yeah. to not rehire managers. So. I, I think that I think that there's I think this year definitely is is uh, is the big, the best opportunity for us to get a new manager, but it, it's it's I, really impossible to say to get a feeling on what you know which way they're going to go. Under Aaron Boone, this is clearly the Yankees' best opportunity to make the World Series. I'm not going to say win the World Series yet because I think the National League has some really top teams, but the American League has never been wa- more wide open for the Yankees. Yeah. Every year that the Yankees have have lost under Aaron Boone. They have, you can say, going in, I don't think they're the best team. And then also on paper, they're just not the best team. This year, they're the favorites. They should be the favorites, and they're the best team. Are they flawed? Sure. But they are by far the best team. So this is the their best chance to win the pennant under Aaron Boone. Agreed. They, I mean, this is this is absolutely their best chance. And that's because the rest of the league has has flaws, like you said. I mean, you could put... I think Baltimore is probably the second best team. If the Baltimore plays to their potential, they, as far as talent goes, I yeah, think they're the ta- most talented. I agree. Uh, if you're, year. if you get into a series with Baltimore, which I do believe they'll be in a division series with Baltimore, Baltimore, the Yankees should win it, but I could very clearly see how Baltimore wins. Like ta- eventually like talent just like starts playing well. Like that offense gets hot at the right time. And- it's going to be a slug fest. I think right. it's going to be a slug fest between those two teams. And especially, you know, from the, from the fifth or sixth inning on, it's going to be those, that's when the teams are going to be, or the games are going to be decided against those teams. That's who, who can hit last really at the end and of the And then day. we, we all know why Houston is scary in a potential matchup, but as far as on paper, what team is better? Like it's clearly the Yankees. Yes. I'm not. I'm not saying that Houston has no chance. The Yankees should win. I give Houston a chance because of their playoff experience. But it's still the Yankees are favored. And then you all know how I feel about the American League Central. The Yankees should mop the floor with any team they see from the American League Central. So this is their best opportunity to win. So from that standpoint, if they make an early playoff exit, maybe Cashman and and Hal and everyone looks at it and be like, ah oh, man, this was your chance, Boone, and and you guys failed. So we're done with you. But I really have a hard time believing that after how they've treated him and this organization and this team and the decisions they've made for the past six years. And again, this goes back to why. Why are they doing this? Because Brian Cashman and Aaron Boone are linked. That's why. That's a huge reason why. They are linked. That decision is linked. Cashman just signed a new contract. It was last year when Judge was a free agent. So I think now they've been linked this two, entire time, well, but, two, the, two seasons but the fact that, that Cashman has a little bit of security and Boone does not, this gives them, I think this is the, 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 the year that you're looking at, no matter kind of what happens, unless they win the world series, because clearly, you know, you could say back in, uh, when, when, uh, when Girardi got, got moved and when he got 
let go or not resigned, whatever you want to call it, fired, basically. It wasn't fired. It wasn't, though. That's the thing. That's the wormy thing about it. No, I know, but he did. But he did. Okay? All of us know what happened. He did. Because it did. And here's why. The decision was made before the results were even in the in the. But in, into the, his contract into the was up and they didn't give him a new contract. I get it. And that's the situation we're in right now. Same thing with, uh, with uh, Joe Torre. But it didn't matter what happened in the playoffs is my point. Like everything you're looking at, that team was ascending and they were playing beyond their means. Like that is a guy that yeah, has that is the most talent out of that team and the most, the, the a huge a result that, out that, of that At this talent. point, that's a different team though. You're missing my point. My point is, is that it didn't matter what happened in the playoffs. They had already made that decision at that yes, point. And it was because a, of the convenience of when the contract was up. And now that there's a little security for Cashman, Boone doesn't have that security. I think this year is the the greatest opportunity that we have to get rid of Aaron Boone. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I think this year is the greatest opportunity that we have because of the way that the cards have fallen. Because of the contract, fine. But I think the decision, just like the decision was made in August to move on from Joe Girardi, the decision was was made in who knows when to keep Aaron Boone after this season. And could things have changed if the Yankees missed the playoffs again and finished below 500 and it was just a complete dumpster fire? Sure. I could have seen them moving on. But at this point, like I said, best record in the league, in the playoffs, got a ticket to the dance. Oh, the balls didn't bounce our way. Oh no, man! You could look, you look at the you look at the last two second halves, and you have a lot of of uh, of reasons on why to move on. Because this division, while they won it, it should have never been this close. Yeah. All right. Another negative from the series is Marcus Stroman. So obviously, let's talk about Nestor Cortez's injury and Marcus Stroman in the same sort of segment here. Nestor Cortez was scheduled to start on Wednesday, and then he. Ended up going on the IL with a flexor strain. He's definitely ineligible for the division series, and it could be a precursor to Tommy John surgery. Obviously, it's terrible timing, terrible news for Nestor. They he's shut down for seven to ten days. I guess if he's comes out of those seven he's to ten playing. days, he's I know, I know, I know. They just didn't officially rule him out for the rest of the season. Is he going to need Tommy John Tommy John surgery? Maybe, maybe not. All I know is this is horrible timing for the Yankees. Horrible timing for Nestor Cortez, who had been one of their best pitchers in the last month or so and my brain immediately went to did moving him to the bullpen affect some things was he doing probably not but no it's there it's it happened i mean it happened it's also at the end of the season so no i don't think so what ended up much changed in his in in the way that he works what ended up happening is stroman made the start on wednesday he was terrible i know he was not helped by his defense we'll talk about dominguez some soft hits, but still the fact of the matter is he gave up 10 hits in three and a third innings. Yeah. He had, he allows way too much contact to yeah. ever pitch in meaningful innings in the playoffs, except if it's the 15th inning and you've used everyone else in your bullpen and you need someone to go out there and throw 95 pitches. Then yeah. it can be Marcus Ass- Stroman. Assuming he's on the roster at that point. But even then you have a guy on second base to start the inning and <laughs> you're giving up Ooh. all those hits like – Oh yeah, playoffs. The they, playoffs. They, they, I forgot they get rid of that. That's they the changed, only that I forgot that they changed the rules no, but of the that, playoffs that, of the game. That is so that dumb. is if that was the rule, then no, Marcus Stroman has no use. But like you might find yourself in an extra inning situation where you need someone to pitch four innings. Yeah, and now that Nestor obviously is not going to be a a guy that's available out of the bullpen or on the roster because of the injury, now Stroman might have a, an opportunity to get in there. So he can't miss bats though. And I know he gives up soft contact. contact. I know he gives up soft contact, but that's what happens. If you give up soft contact of they're going to find holes, there's more opportunities. And especially with the Yankees infield, which (laughs) the Yankees defense in general is not great. Chisholm has all the talent in the world, but he's not a third baseman yet. Okay. Glaber Torres, terrible second baseman. Anthony Volpe, good, good shortstop. Rizzo has been good defensively since he came back. We know left field has been a cluster especially because the guy they've put out there recently cannot field basically 100% catch probability balls. The le- the next negative from the series is Jason Dominguez. I don't know what's going on. That ball down the left field line was a 95% catch probability. I'm assuming the 5% comes from Fenway Park because that's off the wall at Fenway Park. Every other stadium, that is an out in. He said after the game, to his credit, he said that's 100% needs to be caught. I haven't played left field a lot. I can do it pretty much. I mean, obviously, there's things still need to work on, but I feel like I can uh, get uh, more work. I can get there. This three times now since go back to the Seattle series. He mistracked, lost a ball in center field, overran it. It bounced next to him. Going back to his right. 
going to his right, then the ball going to his left, playing left field. It was sort of like a, a kind of a, a liner slash fly ball. Maybe he lost it in the sun, just clanged off his glove. I think Schmidt was pitching that game in Seattle. Remember that one? Yep. And then this one. That's three times now in uh, oh, 10 days that he has misplayed routine fly balls. You say you have to roll the dice with Jason Dominguez. I think they're damned if they do, damned if they don't. If you play Jason Dominguez in the playoffs because you're going to value his offensive potential and he misplays an easy ball in left field, you are absolutely fried. If you play Alex Verdugo because at least he's going to catch easy fly balls in left field and he does Alex Verdugo things and goes 0 for 10 in the series, you get fried. There's a no-win situation here. Right. So... The highest probability of those two things happening is Alex Verdugo uh, going over ten, and and the, but the, here's, here, you but don't here's mess up easy plays in left field. Here's the problem. The problem is is that Dominguez is not hitting. That's the problem. If Dominguez were hitting, then this would they would absolutely one hundred percent you you live with uh, with some of these mistakes. I look. I I don't think that these mistakes are are long-term mistakes as him as a fielder. I think they are, uh, yes, I think he's losing them in the lights, in the night. I think that he's having a hard time tracking these balls all the way to the glove. And whether he's looking up and seeing light or looking up and, uh, you know, not not knowing the stadium a little bit and feeling for that wall or he was too close or whatever, he, something's going on with him. Um, and I think specifically to his right, going, going back to, uh, he overran two of those balls. The one in center field, he overran that ball. And I know he was close to the wall there. The one, the ball on left, he he overran that ball. And it would, and sometimes, especially at Yankee Stadium, that ball does swirl and it will come back. It 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 does that. Um, and going he's, from the minors, he's got to get some majors. familiarity with there. And that's again, that's why I would put him in center because I think he's more comfortable in center field. It's a lot more instinctual. And I would put someone else in left. It doesn't it, like that. That's not the 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 full band aid. He's got to catch those balls. And yeah. I think. I think at the end of the day, you have to be like, all right, those are fluky plays. Like he's going to catch the ball. That's that's what I think. Because he's not a bad defender. And I know Martino he's not a article, bad defender. That Martino article about about this, uh, talking about, you know, it was essentially defending the the Yankees for playing Verdugo and and minimizing how bad Verdugo has been and, and, and talking about the, you know, the, 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 quor- the, the quorum that the, the problem that they have with left field, but it was like a hit. It was like a, I don't even know what the hell it was. It was like a support piece. I'm telling you ever yeah. since that book access, ever since that book access, he's, he's become a, that, that article, Andy Martino doesn't write that article two years ago. No way in hell. He's been, he was always a guy that pushed back and was like, you know, uh, stand up. On the, uh, I don't think he's not pushing back. back. I, the reason why I take stock in that article is because yes, he has access. So clearly someone, maybe it's Brian Cashman directly. I doubt it's Brian Cashman directly, but it's clearly someone connected to Brian Cashman who's saying the conclusion here. Martino writes, suddenly there are no good choices. This is exactly the conundrum that the Yankees feared in early September and one that might have been avoided by leaving Dominguez in AAA for a bit longer okay, to see yeah. if Verdugo would sustain his improvements. Oh, come because- on. See, look, the way it's written, it's the way it's written also. It's the way it's written. Acting like that was the, the right move to keep him in not, the I don't minor think that's leagues at saying. that point. I, I don't do. think that's what he's saying. I think what I, he's... I read that article in a in a in a tone where I'm like, I, I, the so then why I did they it... call him up? If the right move was to keep him in the minors, why did they call him up? That's the thing. I think I, it's like almost like they he's writing it like they were pressured to bring him up, and the right move that they knew all along was to keep him in the minor leagues. Well, the reason say, the, that's the... what it's saying. That that's what the article is saying. It's talking to us like we are almost like we are the ones that forced their hand to bring him up, and like see, see, he wasn't ready. See, Verdugo. Uh, he was getting so much better. No, Verdugo's uh, been trash. Verdugo trash. has been trash. But we we said, well, you can't be worse than trash. And Dominguez has been worse than trash because not only is he not hitting, he can't field easy fly balls. Yes. Again, the whole point of that, though, is that you're looking at what he can be. And there's any potential with Verdugo, it's out the window. There's no potential. He's not even going to be here next year. You're looking at Dominguez, potential. And we've seen him hit, and he's been hitting in the minor leagues so you play the kid, obviously. You play the kid. That's I don't do. think they're going to. And I and I think they are. I, oh, most Unless this, times, this article very well might be like, you know, setting them up for, for doing this. Hey, hey, Andy, write this article so that when we play Verdugo in the playoffs every single day, we can look back and say, okay, look, we're, we're kind of like setting the table for that happening already. That's what this article is. 
Listen, I, a week ago, I would have said... I would have said... Everybody, everybody goes after K for being a mouthpiece. This is a mouthpiece article. I would have I would have said there's no way the Yankees can play Verdugo in the playoffs because for all the reasons you just said, at least you might get offensive potential out of Jason Dominguez. But at this point, when you've seen him bosh three easy plays, how do you trust that in a, in a, in a playoff game? I don't I care. I have to roll the dice. I have to roll the dice. I have to. I'm not rolling the dice on... An, that is game ruining. A a one hundred percent catch probability fly ball to left field botched is potentially game and series losing. A guy who just sucks offensively is not necessarily series losing. A guy who grounds into a double play with runners on base when they could score two runs with a base hit is also series losing. I could go both ways, and Verdugo did exactly that. I, I think had, it's more detrimental to drop a one hundred percent probability fly ball. He, he, but again, like the chances of that happening are. are it's happened three times in ten days. It has happened more often than I like. I will it's not that. like this happened three times in the season. It's happened three times since September 15th. When I see Verdugo up in the box, there's no hope at all. No hope. There's no possibility. There's no potential. There's no okay. Hope. And so the numbers. It's just funny how, since how Dominguez Verdugo, is is, Verdugo has become the guy that people are defending in this I'm situation. not defending Verdugo. No, I'm no. defending there's no right answer here. I get that. But, there, but he is the guy that people are he's the other guy in the situation that's getting defended. Play which Trent is crazy. Grisham. Play Trent Grisham. I mean, that's a possibility. <laughs> but he's going to catch the balls and he might hit a home run because at least he can hit home runs. Entering Thursday. He so center pull, field too. I didn't pull the numbers, uh, but Dominguez was hitting, since Dominguez's call up, Dominguez was hitting 195. Verdugo has been hitting 194. Yeah. Uh, Jason Dominguez is on base percentage 298 to Verdugo's 242. Dominguez slugging 366 to Verdugo's 290. So yes, Verdugo has been worse, but they've both been trash. Yes, they have both been trash. 100%. And if you just look at value on the field, Verdugo has been better than Dominguez because he has not misplayed three easy balls. And again, I mean, he, did, he did misplay a hundred percent probability ball earlier in the year. We saw yes, that he happen. did. I've seen oh. it happen before. Verdugo's so not, not like a good. Seen it. I, this is Sophie's choice, my friend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and what the worst thing that will happen is they'll flip flop, and whoever they start in the series, when that goes wrong, then they'll go to the other guy, and that guy hasn't played in a week and a half, and then that guy will suck too. That's what's probably going to happen. Is what happened with the shortstop situation in 2022, and it was a disaster. So fine, just leave both of them off the roster and play Trent Grisham for all I care. One of the biggest problems I have with this article is the line, I don't have it in front of me, but the line about him talking about the fact that they may have stunted his, his, his uh, ascendance or his improvement by sitting him for long periods of time. And they're talking about Verdugo. I'm like, you're... No, they were, Andy, talking, about they were talking about Dominguez. No, they, they said it about... They said it about... Uh, they oh, yeah, said, I, re I they read, read it. it about I said Verdugo. It. Could Verdugo... Because don't you remember we talked about how over 30 at-bats he was hitting like three-something? And they Martino, were all singles, but he was hitting 300. Andy Martino had to have had... He's like, fuck, pour another shot of whiskey. Pour another shot of whiskey. Take the shot. Do you want me to text article, him? Take another shot. Write the article. Like, there's no way that he's writing that with a full head. And and f what is the what is the saying from uh, Friday Night Lights? Uh, clear eye or full heart, clear eyes, clear head, full eye, whatever the hell the saying is. There's no way that he did that. With 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 full intentions of being the writer that he is as he was coming up, that's not the same guy. The same that someone took over that his pen and and made him write that. I think he might have had a gun to his head when he wrote that article because that is not Andy Martino. When I'm reading this, I'm like, what? Who's writing this? This is not an Andy Martino article. It's crazy. It's funny. Yeah, I mean, I think there's there's a lot to unpack there. Obviously, I I just think it's a no win situation. Um, do you have to run to your actual dentist appointment? I got like five. Who my my uh oh Clappish, Clappish retired, didn't he? I don't know if Clappish retired, but Clappish that book that Clappish wrote was literally just Clappish Brian Cashman. This is an article that Clappish writes in September at the end of September, right before October. This is a Bob Clappish. A, <laughs> Bob Clappish, I used to love reading at the, with the Bergen record uh, back in the day. Him uh, and Woj, you know, happy retirement. But this is a this is a Clappish article. That's what this is. This is a, this is a right hand man article, and there, now there is a new guy. Andy, don't let it happen. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I think I need to text him and ask him, like, hey, who 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 had a gun to your head? Yeah, please Apparently. do. Apparently, yeah. who had the gun? Who had the metaphorical gun to your head to write this article? I mean. 
I, I didn't read that much into it. I, I think he's obviously connected and obviously is talking to people who are expressing to him like, yeah, this was our worst fear and it's coming true. And this is what happens when you get that connected. This is just what happens. It, it does. Like, it, 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 this is what goes down. <laughs> it's like a politician. But like politicians, a lot of politicians not, have balls coming up and then all of a sudden their balls are cut off. Let's not overlook the fact that there is no good option. I understand there's no good option. Like at the end of the day, that's the, the, the biggest problem. The, the end of the day, the, the re- end result of that article is that there's no good option and that's not wrong. That is, that is absolutely true. It's the tenor and the, and the tone and the way that it was written. I get it. But you have to, I believe at this point, we know what Verdugo is. I know exactly what Verdugo is. He's not going to come up in a big moment and get a big hit. It's not that guy. He's not that guy. Uh, Jason Dominguez could get scorching hot and carry this team in a, in a division like that. Well, that's the ability he's got. If you're support, I mean, to support your side here is I think Thursday was the playoff lineup and Dominguez started. Verdugo came in in the middle of that game, but Dominguez started. So do we see a situation where Dominguez will get two at bats to start the game? And if it's a close game in the sixth inning, they're pulling him for defense. Yes. I could see that. And if you're going to do that, then I have no problem with that. Which means 100%. Verdugo is going to get one, maybe two at bats every, every game. Because if he's coming in in the sixth, he came in, didn't he come in in the sixth inning last night? Unfortunately, Jason Dominguez and his defense have put them in that situation where they yes. are going to, they, they got That's to think about I, defense at the end of the game. 100%. I, I have to be hand up and be honest, like, and call it like I see it. And when I see a guy misplay easy balls, how do you trust that in the playoffs? You can't. Uh, yeah, I, I get it. But we've also seen this uh, from Glaber Torres at second base all day, every every day. But that that's every, all season. But that is literally who else you're going to play at second base. And at least Glaber Torres has been hitting. There, ha- no, I'm not talking about now. Uh, I'm saying even before Glaber became, you know, who who were you going to play? You didn't now. have a third baseman. DJ was like struggling to play third base because you didn't have a third baseman. Rizzo yeah, was similar, out. It's at a that situation time that's too. not. It's not. That's not too different. You, you, there are no good options at that point. Like John Birdie wasn't available to to be a guy that you could go in there and and plug in at that moment. There 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 wasn't a clear option to do that. And I think we're in a similar situation. However, the, the other option is a guy that is young, like extremely full of talent. Whereas one of them doesn't have the talent that you thought he might have and is, has been playing like shit as one of the worst hitters in baseball all year long outside the first month and a half, two months of, of when he was, um, you know, at, having a, a, a relatively good season. And then he just disappeared off the face of the planet. One guy is a young guy that has potential and, and like, yeah, you're 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 hoping he catches the ball, which he should, but has the, the way more potential at the plate. I, I gotta play the young guy. Yeah. I, fine. I think it's a coin flip. And, and I do think they're going to either do like they did last night and bring Verdugo in the middle of the game, or you're gonna see a flip flop in the middle of the series, which I think is the worst case scenario. Because then both guys you have you're basically saying we have trust in, we don't trust either of these guys and we're just like crossing our fingers that the guy second can do something that if verdugo has could. good lifetime numbers against a starting pitcher he's going to probably play like that's well, at so the end of the think, day that's what's going to come down to because they dominguez doesn't have the book uh and the history with anybody but if, if dominguez i'm sorry if verdugo has uh has results over the 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 lifetime of at bats against a particular starting pitcher, then you're going to see him in the in there. How about the fact that like, and that that's easily defensible? You're at playing point. at Yankee Stadium, which is a big left field. If you play Baltimore in the DS, you're playing in their new left field, which is cavernous. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> I think the offensive side of things again, it, it'll be results, and the only result that's different because they both hit from the left hand side is matchups and uh and history against a, a particular pitcher. So I think and, and that's honestly like if I'm if I'm the coaching staff and I'm seeing success against a guy, like and 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 then you're real you're realizing that Dominguez hasn't hit either. Again, like all of this boils down to Dominguez still not hitting. Yeah. If Dominguez, had if Dominguez brief, has a he hot brief, Pittsburgh he if, he was okay in the road trip on the West Coast yeah, trip. Yes he was. He was but if he if he comes out blazing hot against the Pittsburgh Pirates, I think you're in a different situation and you play the hot bat. I just also remembered, remember the Little League game? Dominguez hesitating to throw the ball home. That's another, like, that's a, that was a, now that is not like an easy play, but like he had hesitation. 
So again, there's uh, there's now he's made some Glaber Torres like plays in the outfield. There's he's played 107 innings in the outfield, and he has four plays that you can point to in 107 innings. I know that's I know that is it's way too frequent. <laughs> it's it's a lot. It's a lot. It is. And do you see that when that's when one I, every other game? <laughs> like we're not in the situation where you're looking at a starting a full season, doing spring training, and the whole thing, and like him actually getting all those reps. And, and no, you're and, it's and you're crunch like it's probably, time here because it's probably not going to play out over the course of a season. Like you're not going to see that over course. But we're not in that situation. We're right. in him coming up in September, him getting thrown into a situation, and the the immediate transition not going well, and right. that's a problem. Yeah, it's a tough spot for man. <laughs> Yankees left field, just a black hole. He first base, black hole. Two positions they can't figure out. A lot of Brett Gardner references in that article too. Shit, Brett Gardner. I would kill for 2017 Brett Gardner right now. Hell yeah, give me that gritty S- motherfucker. Bat him ninth, <laughs> twelve pitch at bats. Yeah, fielding yeah, everything in the outfield. Head exploding out of his uniform. Yes, just looking like a thumb. Love it. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. I got to go. That's yeah. We're going to wrap up drill night. So we're, we're going to, we're going to talk to you again after the Pittsburgh series, likely not mention anything from the Pittsburgh series. Oh, we're going to talk about the Pittsburgh series. Paul Skeens versus Luis Hill. Luis Hill. First of all, uh, a couple of things happened real quick. The, I think Austin Wells lost the uh, rookie of the year battle in this, in this, uh, in this series. Since we talked about it. (laughs) Kowser. Well, I mean, Kowser came out and hit. He was good. Yeah. And wasn't he the one who hit the ball in the left field where Dominguez uh, uh, I don't remember. I think it was him. Um, Got a double. Anyway, on that. <laughs> I was going to say it's in the, in the in the box score. It's a double. not an error. Didn't help Austin Wells in that one. Also, um, score like use some common sense score. <laughs> and then, uh, and then, so we got Luis Heel against Skeens in the second That's game fun. of Pittsburgh. That's fun. If Luis Heel comes out and shoves for seven innings, now I think that we're year. looking at rookie of the year potential. So yeah, I, you know, as much as it probably shouldn't come down to the last week of of. Uh, of performance, you know, it's going to be fresh in the minds of the voters. So I think uh, it's going to be between Kowser and Heal. But if Heal doesn't have a good start, I think it's Kowser. And then next week, we're also going to be doing season ending grades and probably a preview episode for wherever the Yankees end up playing in the division series. We'll talk to you then.